everyone. It is uh, January 3rd, 2023. So um, this uh, session, what we're going to look at is layered designs. And I wanted to show you something that you can use for uh, Valentine's Day or just to make your own ornaments um, or to make any type of an overlay that you want to for some sort of a gift. So I'm going to uh, share my screen to my workspace. And I've already prepped a file for this. So you can see that um, this is the finished product. And I actually have uh, figured out a new um, sharing, which is kind of cool, is I've hooked up a second camera now. And I can um, share from there. So from the second camera now, you can see that this is the actual finished design. And uh, the camera's over there. <laughs> so this is the design that we're going to make today. And um, I did make a couple of uh, uh, choices with this that you guys can do anything you like instead. So for example, on this one, what I did was uh, curly cues that um, have kind of a square end to them. Uh, and you may like something different where it has more of a rounded or even a tipped end to it. Um, but this was really quick, just so you guys could see an actual finished product um, as we go through this. So the first thing to do with this is a lot of people have been telling me they don't know how to come up with a design or they don't know how to translate their design to something that they um, can actually make something out of. Like they have an idea in their head, but they're not quite sure how to make it. So with this one, it's um, kind of an easy shape, but it's also not a shape that's um, made in, like for an illustrator, it's not in the shape now. When you go in, you can use stars, you can get squares, circles, et cetera. Um, the heart isn't there, so here's a quick, easy way to make a heart, and um, we'll go through it step by step. Let me switch back, and I'm going to go back to Illustrator. There, so this is my starting file, and let's go ahead here, I'll, I'll pull back to what we started with. So. You can see the three set, uh, basically changes that they were in before I got to my final design. Now, um, the first thing you do is you're making the heart. So let's make a heart here. And this is going to be super easy for you guys to follow along with because uh, it's not as hard as you think. And everything I do, I try and do vertically, and then I'll do the shape. Um, rotate if I want to, like in this case, to get kind of a heart on an angle versus straight up and down. So uh, the first thing you do with this is you make a circle. And I'm going to take the A, the white arrow, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down, kind of to an egg shape, and then I'm hitting control or sorry, shift C, which brings up the handle tool. And I'm going to get hold of the handles. Oops. <laughs> Let me go back up there to here. There, so uh, that's what I was trying to do on the but that, of course, it doesn't look as easily for me as it does when it was actually making the file. Uh, sorry. Shift C, and we're just going to have to do this on our own, I think. So this actually is more helpful because then you can know what you're doing um, with it instead. So when you're looking at the handles, you can see these two pieces right here. What you really want is you want each one on kind of a 45 degree angle, so you can see there. So let's pull it up so it actually meets the line. Uh, 
Nothing is easy. Um, not know what's going on with my illustrator right now, but we're going to get through it. So the next thing to do is uh, the same thing where we're going to pull it down and we're going to pull this up until we have kind of the, the heart shape that we want. And I like that curve. You can always grab the handle over here and you can modify that curve itself. So you can say, okay, I've got a really tall part. I actually want to bring that up a bit. And there you can change the curve a bit. So now this shape is what you kind of want to keep. So I'm going to delete this guy over here. And now you have your half. Then what I like to do is I use the V key, the black arrow, to select the piece. And I go up there to the reflect tool. And you want to hold Alt to tell it where you're actually going to reflect from. You can see it's helpful and it shows you where the center is of this if you wanted to just flip it on itself. But we actually want to make it a whole out of the two parts. So we're going to do an Alt to select this. And then you can see the horizontal, sorry, the vertical. I always get it wrong because I think of vertical and horizontal. It's actually a vertical reflect. So you copy it and then you have both. And that's kind of an index working part, isn't it? So let's do this. Let's take this whole thing and with control J, which joins our ends. And let's try pulling this down a little. That's a little better. And it's all subjective. I mean, I really like sometimes to have parts that have got more of a curve to them like that. You can also kind of make this a um, uh, asymmetrical heart. So get a curve in on both sides. But they're obviously not aligned. So let's go with that for this one. Um, now, what I did up here was I made little coils. And you can make coils pretty easily by using this pen tool. It's a curvature tool. And it wants to create curves from three points. So you can see it does a lot of work for you. So if you keep going, it'll try and create a curve that works and you can see it's actually adjusting the curve as you change. So it's trying to make sure it's a nice smooth curve. So you can use this tool for a lot of things. And um, I think a lot of people try to just use the regular pen tool to make rounded fits. And this actually changes up a bit for them. You can make all sorts of, uh, well, I guess, I think you can do a spiral with this too. I'm just gonna do another curl. And I'm going to bring this in a bit. Now for these guys, what I did was I offset paths. So you can see that I got curls that are just one shape. Now when Illustrator has a line, when it offsets path, here I'll do it right now, you actually end up with a shape outside the line. And that's fine. Um, you can actually go in and you can say, you know what, I want a big fat shape, so I have that one. Or what I did is I take the A arrow and I select the two ends. Now I can choose which way I want the fit um, to be on. So with this, this is a point one two or I think I put a 0.14 gap in it. So that's a little over, or sorry, an eighth of an inch. And so if you're working with eighth of an inch um, materials, then this works out really well for um, doing kind of a balance with it. I don't like stuff that's really chunky and then really thin. So like if I was doing quarter inch, I probably would make it a little bit bigger for quarter inch um, versus the eighth inch, but that's just me. So that's just my aesthetic. 
Um, in this case, I'm going to take the outside one off. So now we have this curl. And I'm going to join the ends again, Control J. And now we have a shape. Now you could say, okay, that's great. Um, but I don't really think I want curls. I want some kind of a lacy pattern or something. So what I would do is I go back to this curvature tool and I create something that uh, starts to curl and then I take a turn a bit. Okay, right, let's try something like that. Um, in this case, we can just give this a thickness. So let's go up with like eight point, something kind of fat. And we're going to go in and path outline stroke. And this is another way that you can easily do a shape without having to do any work with it. But I want to show you guys both because then that way you know what you're doing when you're going in and you're modifying handles, you know what you're, you're modifying ends, you're changing the shape, um, using the different tools, I think is really a good thing for people to know. So in this case, I'm going to come back to just the pen tool. So that's the P. And I'm going to look at this and say, okay, that would be good for a leaf. And hit P again, and you're done with that piece. So pull it out, hit P again, and you're done with that piece. All you're doing here is you're starting with line, you come out to the length of the line, and then you pull on the handle, and it gives you that curve. And you P again, stops working on that line, and then you go to the next. So let's try this with the backwards, see where we're at. Um, now, the thing with this that's nice is now you can come to these guys, and I think they went with an eight inch before. So let's go back to the native stroke. And if you're not aware of it, then you can hit this. Uh, it's in this the stroke window. So if you don't have it up, then you can leave this down here. And it's actually under appearance. Yes. So actually click the word stroke not the uh, stroke box because that's just the color. And now this gives you a kind of an advanced dialogue. Um, one of the things that's kind of cool is you can change the ends. So you can say, I want a cap at the end that's a uh, butt cap that's flat to the uh, point. You want a round cap and that's gonna round it off around the point. And then you can also do they call it a projecting cap, but it's basically a butt cap with space. So your point, you can see is right inside the end. Now there's different reasons for using these, and I'll get into those on um, different uh, um, sessions. But for today, what we're concerned about is you come down here and you see the profile of your stroke. Now the profile is the fact that you have a straight stroke. So with this, what we're going to do is we're actually going to come down and look at the basic profiles that they offer you. Now I have a couple of favorites, and in this case, you can see that one looks like a leaf. And once we put that on, then you can see it right now kind of looks like a half moon because of my curve. But then it starts to look more like a leaf. Curl it out, and then we put it back onto our stem. So do this to each one of them. Right now, you select the pieces that you want to modify, and you use I for eyedropper. You could go all the way over here and find it in there, but I for eyedropper works really well. And you select that, and it's going to give you your basic stroke and everything. Now you're going to have to go back in and go advanced and turn it into the leaves. So right there, you can see that you've got some nice little leaves, easily done, um, oops. and uh, not much effort to it. 
So just another tool that you guys can use. So now with this one, what I did is I actually combined, oh, I think I pulled a few out of the I combined a whole bunch of these curls on top of the shape. So if you're not aware of it, or if you're new to this, then the key thing with these shapes is like, for example, if I take this and I add, sorry, object path, uh, offset path. So now we get that nice opposite. This is actually doing a 0.138. Um, the other one I did was 0.14. So uh, what you can do too, is you see that this goes outside of the path. You can make any uh, distance you want. So in this case, I could say a 1.12 to match a an eighth of an inch. And I can also flip it so that in, instead of it being outside the shape, it's actually inside the shape by adding a minus sign and hit tab. And you can see that it then pops it inside. So it makes it really easy when you're working on stuff to go fast. Now the key thing is this right now isn't two shapes, or sorry, it isn't one shape, it's two shapes. It's not a frame yet. So you want to select both. And when you come over here, you want to actually minus front. If you minus front, it cuts it out like a cookie cutter. And now you can see you have the actual shape that's an out. It's a frame, I guess, if you want to call it. So in this case, then. Let's see what we want to actually copy in. Let's take one of these curls back. And now the curls are already a shape. So you can see that they um, are closed on either end from when we were working with them. So you can bring this back in. And this is a little big. So let's juice that down a bit. And I kind of like the idea of having its curve near this curve. So let's take this and we can say, you know what? Um, I actually want to keep this curve for more stuff. So what I should have done is instead of just carrying it over, I should have held Alt and cloned it over. So we're going to save our piece by doing that. And now we're going to come in here and we're going to unite our shapes. And now already you've got a shape that's going to be cut out, kind of like the example I showed you in the beginning. So you can come in and you can do this with all of your uh, decisions on your curl. Oops, there, I did it again. So we're going to alt and pull this shape back over. Now, I like to kind of rotate it a bit, um, kind of pull, uh, make it awkward um, or, you know, change the change the dimensions of it. Um, in this case, now you can see it's going to overlap the other one. And I'm not a big fan of this end being square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it overlap there and have it overlap the end here. So now we're kind of smoothing things out. So now we're going to select them all. And you can see those are gone. Now, when you look into this though, and this is another place where I want you to see what you can do with this. You can see that this line's got this extra little point. That was the end of the square tip over here. So you don't have, right now I'm using the, the white arrow to show you the line. So you can see the um, points. You can do two things here. And I think one of them is what people are used to doing. And the other is what people um, may not be as, used to doing or may not know about. So in this case, you can always come in and you can select that point. You can delete the point and then you can go control J and join. And that gives it to you. But that also gives you a couple of extra points that you don't really need. So I would say that what we're going to do is we're going to go back and I'm going to pull that up. And we're going to hit the minus tool. 
And this is actually the pen tool that removes points. Um, so you can take this over here and you can say, you know what, that point's not necessary. And that point, oh, no, I guess it is kind of necessary. Let's try getting rid of this point. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually something I wanted to show you is you can go in and edit and remove points fairly easily, but in this case, you're going to have to do it because they both have uh, handles on them. Let's see if I do a select here. That's got a handle that's affecting this curve, and then this has a handle that's affecting this curve. So we'll just go back in and do the first way because, oops, sure, it's just the one. That makes the most sense for this situation. So most of all, I want you to get used to working with tools that you may not be used to so that you're um, going and you know all the options when you're designing. So let's go back. Let's add another curl. Remember, it's Alt to hold down and then we're carrying it over. And now I think we should rotate this guy. Maybe go there. And let's pull it so it kind of hangs in the air, but it's attached here. Then we'll get to this end point um, next. So I like to just see this as I go along. You don't have to attach them all. Um, sorry, unite them all as we go. But um, you can do it all at the end. I just like to see uh, what I'm making and what the overall shape and uh, design is with the, all the new pieces that I add, because then that way I can kind of be informed about it. Okay, now with this guy, we don't actually want to take the whole thing. Um, we just want to have kind of this curve right here. And you're saying, well, okay, you just take it to this curve that's already got that end shape. And in this case, we know that we want to kind of cut it off right here. And you can use the pen tool, or no, sorry, not the pen tool, the knife tool or the scissors tool. Um, I personally am used to using the points. So I'll personally go in and I'll add a point using the plus sign, which is the same as when we were using the minus sign to pull in the removal point pen tool, and I'll add a point there and there. So now, one of the nice things about the white arrow, the A arrow, is that when you select a line, it deletes the line. And you can see it just deletes the line up to the next uh, anchor point. When you select a line and delete it, you can see that it's still selected all the way through to the end of the shape. So now if you hit delete again, oops, when earth is, <laughs> I just, uh, I just updated my illustrator. So I'm not sure why it's doing that, but okay. So you select it and it's gone. And sorry, that was because I had selected it after that's what it was. I selected it after it was attached to this. And what you want to do is once you select that, you actually go in and careful, cut both ties. Then you deselect. And I'm just clicking down to deselect. Um, now you can see you've selected this object without those. And then that's where the double tab takes it away. I'm going to close this object here and then it's going to merge with the rest of my curls. Okay, so let's see where we're going here. Uh, there we go. Okay. My appearance window wasn't updating. Um, let's finish this out with a couple more. Ah, see, I used up my curl again. Um, let's add in some just curved lines. That might be fun. So we can do the pen tool. Uh, it actually, if you have caps lock on, it'll change to a precise point cursor. 
so that you can say, okay, I want to make sure it's exactly at this point versus the pen point is at the tip of the um, icon for the cursor. And uh, it may not be as easy, so easy for people to uh, work with. So I'm going to make something like a crosshatch. Select all these guys, go up here, make them uh, four points. That's half of what the other one was. And we're going to go to object, path, outline stroke, and then we're going to unite. And that makes this nice little shape here. I'm going to leave this uh, filled just so you can see that when we go in, we're going to have it do something like that. And I actually wanted to try and reach the ends over here as well. So, and this is just random, like this, I haven't done this before, so we'll see what this looks like. It may look terrible. This may not be something you want to do, <laughs> but let's try it, right? So, uh, I'm going to bring these guys in, so they're inside this circle, and then I'm going to bring these guys down, so they're meeting the square. So they're meeting the frame. And this guy, no, I think it's about right there. It's kind of tempted to not have him straight down that curve, but we shall see. Oops, and then with this, oops, there we go. With this guy, you want to bring it up. We're going to just get into that shape of thing. We could go beyond that. I think this is a reasonable place to start. We're going to place this inside. Oops. And this is what happens when you work off the cuff. And let's see here. Okay, so now with this, since this is a filled shape, once they meet, then um, I think it will fill the whole thing, which is kind of different, but it actually kind of shows you what it's all going to look like when it's cut out. So you can see that's not great, but it is interesting. So you could do a buffalo plaid, making it out of that and dropping it in there instead of the curls, uh, stuff like that. So now we're going to take a look at taking it and adding it to a circle. And this gives us kind of a framework that we can say is going to hold. Oops, now it's filled by everything versus stroked um, to hang things on. So you can see in this case, for this design, you can hang something here. You can uh, hang something here, hang something here. Or uh, one of the things that I've seen that's actually kind of pretty is uh, you use a ribbon. So let's pretend this is a ribbon right here. It would actually go like through the back. So you could see it, it would be over right here in the solid ribbon, and then it would be under the heart. And then um, you can see that would be a nice pretty fill that it does. You can use a wider ribbon so you get a little bit more. You can use a couple of ribbons, um, you know, one on each side. And then, so it'd be there, there, and there. And then have it almost filled in the center. So just lots of neat things that you can do to make it into, like put it in a frame, grab it in presents, all the, all the options. Now we're going to come back to this guy. We're going to cross the tab. That'll give us our negative one too, which is a nice thing. This remembers the last one you did. So if you're going through and you're working with the same uh, dimensions across uh, different shapes, then you can easily do the offset path at the same 
dimensions without having to reset it or remembering what you're doing. I personally am terrible at taking notes when I do this, and sometimes that's not great. So this, now we're going to pull this guy. I kind of think I want to add it more of a, more of an angle to that. And we're going to resize it. So in this, I'm holding shift. So you can see shift with dragging on the corner actually pulls up from the bottom corner. And then it's the opposite corner, which you're grabbing. So here you can see if I hit shift, it's dragging that way. So that's an interesting to note versus if you have something where you hit alt shift then what that'll do is it actually conforms it to dragging and expanding from all four sides. So just something to know when you're working on stuff. If you don't know it, then, uh, you know, it's, it's part of your repertoire of learning tools. So in this case here, I've dragged it out with alt shift. We've got a nice uh, size to it, but we're not quite the right uh, distance here. So I'm going to use shift and drag and just pull that right back in it. And we're gonna get all of this points in the frame. And now here's a good uh, point again, is I've made the frame, but I haven't actually made it into a shape. So if I were to select all three, it wouldn't do anything except for delete when you do uh, the minus frame, or sorry, the unite. Um, so in this case, you want to select these two circles, do the minus front, so it make, creates a shape out of it, and then do the unite, and then it makes a shape out of that. And we'll fill this again just so you guys can see that now you have almost the same thing here as you did there. And I'm going to switch back to pull this up first. I'm not sure if I've got, I don't think I have any ribbon, but I do have a piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a wide ribbon and cut this out in two seconds. And then Switch to my other camera. There we go. Okay, so for this guy, then this is what I was talking about with the ribbon, just so you guys can actually get a visual on it. Is you want to run it through, and because this is kind of angled, you actually want to pull it through this way, and then you would have something that actually creates, or I'll do it that way so you guys can see it kind of face up. It creates this background for it. So um, then you could actually go through and make it so it goes up uh, on either side or do all three. Um, let me see if I can pull this in half so it's thinner. And then we'll have two to illustrate. So now you have one here. And here. So white is pulling out a lot, isn't it? I'll have to have ribbon available next time on my desk. Anyway, you can see that you starting, you're starting to get some interactions with this that um, can kind of make it really interesting if you were doing something like putting this into a frame. Um, you can make a memento out of this and have people, you know, give you pieces of fabric from a shirt of a loved one, um, all sorts of things. And obviously you can pull this back and just uh, glue the ribbon on, you know, trim that off. 
or you can let it keep going and uh, put it on a box or something like that. Oh, oh I think this box is a little too small, but let's show that you can put it down. So using it as like the decoration on top of the box, do something like that. And then it's on the side. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, there's lots of different things that you might think of as you're doing this or after you've made a design and then you're trying to figure out like how you can market it. So with this, you can stop there and then you've really got something you can already market. Or since we were talking about layered designs, go back to the illustrator and we're going to take this and I'm gonna drag this over here so you guys can actually see it better. Oh, I never did get back to that. Design system help. Um, I'll show you that in a second. I know we're getting close to the end of time. Um, so with this, you can then go in here and I double click to get into the groups. So I just keep going until I can select the shape that I'm after without selecting anything else. So you can see there, I finally got the outside ring and I want to copy that. And the reason I'm copying that is because I may have resized it while it was doing something. So I want to make sure I get the outline that's for this shape. And with that, I can say, okay, I want to maintain this gap or even go a little smaller. So I'm going to go to path and out. Oh, oops, shoot. Object. Uh, Offset path. And I think this is a little thinner. I think I did 0. 0.14 here. So that's fine if you're doing it as the backing. And then you can do uh, something like a uh, circle as the hanger, which a lot of people will do. I kind of think that with something like this, we want to go back to doing the Let's do it once, sir. I know this is kind of just a really quick copy of what we did earlier. So that's why I'm not really going through the um, steps for it. And I want to make sure that this is actually selected with the whole object select, not just the point. So I'm going to go over to horizontal, sorry, vertical, and alt, and I'm going to copy that. So now you have J, you have a sheet. And what I'm going to do with this is I don't really want the point coming in. So I'm going to pick a spot there. It's, it's actually helping us with that guide by saying that's the center here. And we're going to first make this a shape. So minus red. And then we're going to apply here. And we're going to offset so that we have a little bit of a, a hanger. I don't think it needs to be this thick. I'm going to go half to this because oops, uh, you just need it to hold a ribbon. It's not like it's really being anything that's uh, truly functional. So same thing, go here, minus front, and these are two shapes. And with this, Yes. So now we get the separation here. And I'm going to say that I want to go in and remove that point. Oops. No, I guess in this case, we're just going to have to delete it like we did the buddy. So delete that. We're going to select this whole thing and delete it. And then we're just going to take this and it'll be, you know, it's a little stiff, but it'll still be behind 
what's going on on the other thing. So that's a layer. And you can do something on the layer that matches like the heart itself. So do the heart layout, you know, by pulling that outside part of the um, frame out or which then you can paint behind and give it a layered, um, you know, if you have the, I'm gonna just pull it up here. If you have this guy again, then you can put uh, colored uh, paper, paint, dye, all the various things behind it, which I'm sure you know, everyone's familiar with. So you just have solid behind, or you can do the shape of the heart behind, or you can go in and watercolor. So each of these curls has a different color behind. You know, there's a lot of options and including the painting of this too. So in this case, you can make a really nice little hanger and then this is gonna sit on top of this ring for the hanger. And then you can do something like, okay, we're gonna personalize this. So we can, um, let's see here, we'll take the outside right again. Actually, actually no, we're gonna take the inside ring here since we're gonna try doing just personalization. So we're gonna copy that. Get all this over here. We'll get to that later in another session. And now, I'm gonna paste. This is our inside circle. So in this case, we actually wanna make it just a little bit bigger because we wanna have it be something that shows us the out, not quite the outside shape, but a little bit in. Actually, no, it doesn't matter because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a name on it. So the name on this, the circle is just to show us where it's gonna go since it'll be glued down. So in this case, we're gonna hit T for the type tool and let's pick out a name. Oops, I've got caps lock on. So here's a net, and we're going to kind of pull it out to the size that we think it needs to be. We're going to come down here, and in Illustrator, you can actually decide what it is that you want to look at. So do you want to look at a Sam Serif? A Serif, Slab Serif is, is just thicker Serif, so it's like the bolder fonts, which is kind of nice for laser stuff. Um, script fonts, which everybody loves, the script fonts for a lot of different things. But in this case, what I think I want to use is something that's a little more um, ornate and will actually sit over the curls without interrupting them much. It's not going to be a script on a swirl that's hard to read. So I think I'm going to go with Royal Signage, which is a lovely font. I use this for a lot of stuff. And you can see that we're pretty big now. So we're going to pull this across so that we know here that it's going to have parts that are going to overlap to that edge. And they'll be across the heart. So they will, they will definitely be in a position where they're glued down and they'll stick. So in this case, now this is something a lot of people probably don't know. Um, when you're working with type in Illustrator, if you see any kerning, that's the space between the letters that you want to adjust, you go into it so that you're actually in your flashy cursor and you use the alt, mm, the alt key and you use the right and left arrows. And this will let you be able to go in and change any of the gaps between these. So if you have a uh, first character cap that is a little busy, maybe it gets into the second letter some, then you can space it away. Um, you can always space it a little tighter. If you say, you know what, I want that to almost be touching. So let's pull all these in not quite touching, but almost all of those things. And uh, that gives you a lot more control over the font look itself. So in this case, I think I want to add some sort of a, 
Uh, no, I think we're fine. I don't think we need to add a design. So the shape will be that. And actually with this, what I was thinking is that if you add something that ties them all together, then it makes it an easier cut. So let's go in, actually. Let's go back in and I'm going to get a rectangle tool. Go back up a bit here. I'm going to start here on the E and I'm going to pull down. So it's only the width of that tie. Oops. Go all the way up here first. And then there you can see it doesn't really modify too much of it, but it does make it a piece that connects. Okay. So with the text, we'll do create outlines. So type create outlines. It's also shift control O. And then we're going to select bold. Going to merge them into a shape. And then now that would be something that you cut. Oh, there it is. I'll have to swap that. You can cut this out separately and then you can put it onto it. And you can see it's just a little bit outside our ring. This is just a guide ring. I like to make my cut lines um, red. So as I go through when I'm finishing a file, I'll go through and say, okay, that's red. This is going to be the name in the cut file. So that's going to be red. And this doesn't have an engraving. So it doesn't really need anything outside of that. One of the fun things that you can do, fun things, um, one of the things that you can do to make sure that your uh, design works is you can make sure that the outside cut line is the last thing that cuts. And in the Glowforge, you do this by colors. In other lasers, you do it, um, you can select colors, um, and then you select it in light burn um, that it's going to cut outside last. So here, let's change inside cuts Oops, to blue. And of course, I need to go inside the shade. There, you can see I can select both of those. Now we're gonna show. Okay. <laughs> this is probably because I'm sick. So we're gonna just try it this way and see. And if this doesn't work, I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna change, let's say this really in here. There, is that working? No. Anyway, um, <laughs> if you go in, I know how to make it work, is I just go in here, I select that, I select that, I cut them, and I paste them front. Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna have to reboot my machine. there and you can see that's a separate color. Now this one should be the one that I can make red. Okay, so what this does is it actually makes it so this will cut first if, as long as you drag your layers and then you can have a layer that cuts last. So you can do the same thing in here. You can um, drag, sorry, drill down into the part where you have the shapes separate from there, uh, separate from the frame. So in this case, what you might do is you might say, you know what, I want all of this to cut. Um, make sure you get all the little pieces. So all this is that, and it's that. So doing that, you can see the pieces that you missed too. There. So we're going to take this out and we're going to paste it on top. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use a third color. And this color is going to be basically the cut first. 
and then we're going to go in and this one and this one are inside cuts. So that's going to come out. And I'm just double plugging. When you see that, it goes fading because I'm going into the groups and then now I'm coming out of it by double clicking out. And here, paste in front. And this is going to be my dropper, that color. And then you can see that this is going to be the red. And I picked an orange, so it's not really easy to see the difference in the colors, but well, maybe they come across as orange. Illustrators, letting me down today on how uh, funky it is. Okay, so I'm going to get that, 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 that. Yeah, you can see it was kind of a red orange, but let's go to something. Completely different line in yellow, which isn't always easy to see. But there, you can see that um, this is three different sections with the round layer and another layer for the name on top. So in this case, our name is going to end up being something, uh, we can either leave it straight on top of it, or we can angle it with it. It's up to you what you want to do with it. But in in the end, it's going to be solid on top of the solid uh, piece that I showed you on top of the piece with the hanger hole. So I think overall it'll be um, something fun to work with. And it'll give you guys kind of a base of what you can do when you're just thinking about something and then you kind of keep adding to it and uh, making decisions as you go versus having to know everything straight out when you begin. Um, and I think that I think that I described everything enough so that uh, you wouldn't have any issues with it. But um, if there is something that I miss, then please let me know. Um, I'm going to take out the share. Oh, I stop sharing. Stop share. There we go. And so basically it's um, fairly easy to do and it lets you kind of work with it with a lot of different tools and then you can learn as you go and you can keep adding and making more progress as you go too. So I hope that uh, I went over like three minutes. I hope that this is something that you guys enjoy, that you get a lot of information from and uh, I'll try to do a couple of sessions that are shorter where I just make shapes and don't really explain as much, but kind of go through a process of working out a file for you so that you can see that this can, these tools, these methods can translate to a lot of different options. So thanks for watching. Um, please leave comments and I'll come back next time.